Good afternoon, I'm Lee Partridge and welcome back to Colu TV for the pre-match show ahead of today's Leighton Orient game. On the show today, we have the man of the match results from the win against Bradford on Tuesday. Who did you decide? We'll see very shortly. We'll also be hearing from one of the stars of that game, Alamin Kazim, getting his thoughts on uh, today's game and uh, the game the other night. And also we'll be looking at a previous game against Leighton Orient that we've played in. Firstly, let's get the pre-match thoughts of Colchester United's head coach, Wayne Brown. Well, Wayne, back-to-back um, -back home games, obviously against decent opposition, but you're going with three points on the board. Nice way to go into a game against Leighton Orient. Yeah, it always helps. It helps with the, the, the confidence and morale, as I said. Um, after the game on, on Tuesday, we've, we've been the other side of those narrow margins this season and it's nice to come out on top of one of those narrow, narrow margins. There weren't a great deal in the game, but having created sort of 22 opportunities to score goals, I felt we, we deserved the, the goal that we got in, in the, what was the 98th minute. Um, and I thought the, the lads thoroughly deserved it about the way they went about their business um, in the positive manner that they did. Um, and as I said, sometimes you... Uh, you need that little bit of luck to come the other side of a of a one nil win rather than a one one nil loss. You've, you've talked in the opening weeks of the season about you've done okay in games, but putting together ninety minutes or ninety eight minutes as it might have been on Tuesday was that almost it for you on Tuesday? Uh, it was closer. It was closer to um, a, a better sort of rounded performance um, over a, a bigger uh, sort of period of time. Um, but again, the changes that we made, I felt helped that helped us uh, play a little bit more positive, positively um, and we wasn't in as, as, as much rush to get the ball forwards. You know, we, we identified in, in the opening games and again the way that we set up a little bit more defensively against the teams that we've played and the fixtures that we've had um, but we felt it was a real opportunity being at home against another good team um, but we did try and take the game to them a little bit more and it was a little bit more braver in possession of the ball and when I say braver in possession of the ball we know with less trust Let's go back, let's switch, um, let's have periods with, with the ball in possession to then try and create opportunities to score goals and I thought that, that came out in the game. Yeah, you, you mentioned after Saturday about when you did get the ball, you're slashing at things, I think it was the term you used, and not being more careful when, when you do get the possession, and as we know, possession is key in the game. Do, do you feel it does change at home where maybe you are expected to be a bit more on the front foot? Again, I think it depends on who you, you play against. You know, I think if you cast your mind back to to last year, you know, Swindon at home and Paul Val at home, Tranmere at home, you know, teams that are at, at the top end in the sort of top four, um, we have to sort of take every game in in isolation, um, and we have to try and prep the lads, pick a team, and and work out how we feel as as a coaching staff we're going to get the most success in a game of football. Um, ultimately, we're in in the business for three points. So as I said, you know, we have to um, do our due diligence on opposition um, whilst worrying about us, whilst worrying about the strengths that we have um, and, and how we're going to create and how we're going to ultimately score goals to, to get three points on the board. You know, there's more than one way to skin a cat and uh, as I said, you know, depending on the opposition will depend on what way we're going to go about our business. In terms of young players, Alamin Kazim and, and Marley Marshall Miranda in particular you know, had, had a baptism right at the start of the season. Uh, with the young players, do you, do you feel they can keep turning that out week in, week out? Will there come a point where, look, they're going to have to have a rest because they're not used to this environment and so many games? Well, there's the test. I mean, listen, if we had 27, 28 pros here, you know, we'd be in a position to, to dip them in and out as and when we saw fit. Um, at the moment, as I say, we've got a few injuries. Um, which is, is, is obvious, obvious to everybody. Um, and the challenge now for, for not just those young individuals, but for the lads that have got the shirt, is, is to keep level of performances of such where it makes it very hard for me to leave them out. Um, and again, whether or not you're, you're 18, 19 or, or you're 37, that's got to be, got to be the aim. Um, but listen, the lads have, have done exceptionally well, especially the two younger lads. Um, to churn out performances of, of a consistent level week in and week out. As I said, the challenge now is they, they need to keep doing it. Mm, yeah, because obviously they've got professional contracts for a reason because you feel they can do it. Well, ultimately, you know, we do like to bring our own in, but there isn't, it's not a given that you're going to be given an opportunity. You, know, you, you have to earn it right. You have to work hard. You have to develop. You have to take information on board. Um, and you have to evolve and, and get better as an individual. 
it is our job to, to help them do that. Um, I mean, last year I think Marley had a frustrating year where we didn't get much game time. Um, we kept them in and around the squad uh, for large periods of the, of the, of the year um, and before I was involved um, as, as a member of the squad, but again, got no real game time. Towards the latter part of the year, he had a, he had a loan spell, which again, done him good. Um, and he fully deserves with the attitude and the performances that he's done in 23s and pre-season with us in the first team environment, his opportunity. Alamin's a little bit different. Um, I think Alamin prob probably played over 50, 60 games for me at Malden. Um, so I know the individual um, inside out, if you like. Um, I know his mentality, um, his physicality. Um, and he, he can be a real attribute on his day and 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 when he's mentally right and physically right there's 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 a real player in there um, and I think everybody's seen that in in the last three three performances as I said it's now down to the individual treating them no different to anybody else I'm, I'm a fully believer in equality um, and again if your performances are at a level and, and you're doing the business you keep the shirt are you any closer to getting any of those injured players back in and around it or not uh, hopefully, hopefully one or two, um, hopefully one or two can can be back for the weekend. But again, you know we've got 48 hours uh, left to, to try and get them right. Um, but as I said, after the performance on 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 Saturday, it's 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 now a good problem to have where you've maybe got a couple coming back into the fold from from injury, um, and people are desperate for the shirt. So it can only be a, a healthy situation to be in. We know about games against Leighton Norrie and they always bring a big following. It's just, just down the A12 always creates a great atmosphere and they've started well and have invested quite heavily during the summer. Yeah, I mean, every time you look at the box, you know, they've signed another player and, listen, I'm not interested in what they do and, and how they go about their business. Obviously, we was in a different situation in, in, uh, in the summer where we had 15 under contract, so there's only a, a limited amount of business that, that, that we, we can do. Uh, we are still looking to do some business before the window shuts and we've been very proactive in, in doing that. But as I said, we need to identify the quality um, that, that we need to bring in and, and see who's out there. Um, that's an ever-evolving situation. Um, obviously, Orient have, have brought a lot, lot of players in. They've obviously had a good pre-season, they've been away. Uh, they've had time to work with the new recruits that they've brought in. Um, and they've had a good start, but ultimately we're not worried about, about them and, and who they've got and, and how they've played. It's, it's about us being at home, um, especially. Um, and about how we're going to take the game to them and, and, and ultimately try and replicate the standards that we've set on Tuesday night. And just finally from me, if you, even if you take away the, the final couple of minutes where you get the late winner on Tuesday night, I thought the atmosphere was really healthy around the stadium and really positive. Did, did, did the players and yourselves feel that as well? Yeah, there was a buzz. Um, I think that the slickness, slickness of the surface helped. Uh, both teams passed the ball. Um, I thought that was a massive, massive difference. Um, and it was, um, you know, evident that there was there was more noise in the stadium. Um, the, la the, the, the lads obviously noticed it. Um, the, the fan base that we have at home is going to be a massive part of this season of, of being our su of being success. Um, obviously, we struggled last year at home uh, with our home form. Um, so it's always nice to get three points in what's our what second game at home this season. Um, to get three points on the board, it's it's now we need to now try and back that up, um, keep the noise in the stadium um, loud, and that always helps when you're you're performing well uh, of a standard, um, because you know they're going to have a massive part to play, and they did have a massive part part to play on Tuesday right until the the hundredth minute um, of the game, um, and that proved the case of, of sucking the ball into that net, um, and it just showed how much it meant to the lads with the celebrations at the end, you know, making sure that they stayed in and around the fans for a good period of time um, and made sure that we all celebrated the goal together. Yeah, because when, when John McGreal was here a few years ago, he talked about the connection between the club and the players and the fans and how important that is. And you, you say, keep the noise loud in the, in the ground, keep it positive. Yeah, that's right. Um, Even it's, when things aren't going right. It's always easier to do that when you're performing well because they have got something to cheer about. But ultimately that there needs to be a bit of realism in the fact that sometimes you know Carlisle at home for example um, we didn't play real fluent football that's going to be the case home and away uh, we're not going to play fluent, fluent football for 90 minutes but then the reaction that we showed in the second half in that game in particular 
there was more noise in the second half because we had more territory, we was getting more final third entries, we was getting more attempts at goal. Um, so it is tough as a, as a supporter. Um, obviously frustrations were had away to Stockport. Um, but again, there needs to be a bit of realism sometimes. Um, the, the, the support was fantastic at Stockport. Um, but win, lose or draw, you know, they're, they're going to be massive um, to get behind the lads. Uh, to help us maybe get out of a hole sometimes in, in a game with, with how positive they can be on, onto the lads. Um, because when you're winning, it's great. Everyone's loud, everyone's positive. Uh, win, lose or draw, we, we, we need to be positive to try and get results. Um, and as you've seen Tuesday night, it might take until the, the 90th, uh, 98th minute for us to do that. Um, so it's just about being patient and, and getting behind the lads when, when they can and, and in the main they've, they've been spot on ever since we've been in the environment um, you know last year when we came in the 22 games that we had they were definitely a, a, a massive part of us helping us achieve what we, we set out to do which was survival this year we want to achieve um, and not survive um, and they're going to have a massive part to play in it That's Wayne's pre-match thoughts on today's game. He's hoping for another good performance this weekend and, of course, full of praise for the defence, rightly so. And we've been speaking to a key man in that defence, Alamin Kazim. We caught up with him ahead of today's game while he was at a summer camp for the football in the community with the rest of the squad. And this is what he had to say. How season only a few uh, games old. You must be really pleased with uh, sort of how it started for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased. Um, just been given an opportunity and just showed what, I've, what I'm capable of and still a lot of hard work and dedication to come. Yeah, and obviously you were with the squad pretty much all the way through pre-season. Did you think for a second you'd have played this many games by now? Um, not really, no. But um, honestly, it's just one of those ones where you just keep working hard, put your head down, nothing changes, just many more games to go just have to prove myself and keep working hard yeah and for a young player like yourself like the other youngsters in the team like Marley having experienced pros around you is that good both in the games and in training oh yeah it's unbelievable to have them with you because they kind of just guide you through the games and training and gives you tips and stuff like that where you wouldn't get anywhere else yeah. Yeah. and the head coach has said you know it was easy to put you in and trust you to do the job here because he knows you very well both personally and as a footballer and knows uh, you can step up uh, because of the games he had with you at Molden yeah he's I've been with Barney since I was probably 16 so he knows me quite well knows my strengths and my weaknesses and obviously we're working on that on and off the pitch so yeah, just hard work yeah. yeah and obviously the step up always looks a massive step up from development football into first team but how have you found it and what are the main differences been for you um, I found it quite good to be fair like it hasn't been too tough I think because obviously we've been watching the game since we were like academy boys but I feel like the the main difference is the tempo it's like people are on you like you need to be able to do things right don't back out of challenges and be able to be a, a leader in your own role um, kind of thing and just just working hard as simple as that yeah. and that, the physical side of it hasn't looked like it's phased you at all either you look like you enjoy as you say, you know, getting stuck in and making those challenges. Yeah, I, I do enjoy it. It's just one of those things where um, it's one of the things you can't really work on as a player. It's hard work. And when you see a challenge that you need to go for, just, just go for it. You know what I'm saying? And obviously, you've got in the team, you're holding down your place at the moment. But you'll know as well as everyone else that, you know, the hard work doesn't stop, does it, either on the training ground? No, it doesn't stop. Just I'm just looking forward to the future and keep working hard and see where it leads. There's the pre-match thoughts there from Alamin Kazin. Now it's time for the man of the match from Bradford's game. And you decided the winner was going to be that man himself, Alamin Kazim in first place, closely followed by Tom Eastman and in third place, Marley Marshall Miranda. Well done to all of those guys and thank you for voting. After the game today, please do go to coltickets.com to once again vote for today's man of the match. And that will be live until Sunday lunchtime. Just before I go and you make your way to your seats to cheer on the lads, a quick reminder that tickets are on sale for the cup game against Premier League opposition Brentford on Tuesday. Once again, go to coluticketscom As always, if you want to contact us here at Coltis United for maybe a birthday mention or a hello to someone on the show or anything for the matchday programme or the big screen, email us at media at colchesterunited.net. That's about it from me. I'll leave you with some highlights from a previous game where we took on the Orient from earlier this year. Until next time, it's goodbye for now.